Welcome to Kiwi Talks, the ultimate destination for all things beauty, entertainment, news, and business. Hosted by yours truly, Kiwi Vossarella. everyone so basically our first segment is going to be all about self-care where I empower and inspire anyone who's watching to always care about yourself first and give yourself some tender loving care this is something that I try to do often my first segment of the show will always be about self-care I would like to get to self-care first in the beginning of my podcast so i want you all guys to participate and maybe you'll learn some things from me and maybe you'll practice some of the uh self-care ideas that i share with you guys so my first segment is called matcha hour and what is matcha hour i guess you're guessing right it's a dedicated period of time to self-care I take this hour to replenish my mental and my emotional well-being while one of my favorite with one of my favorite drinks. Um, it's matcha tea. You can make a matcha latte. Uh, you can do a lot of things with matcha, and matcha has a lot of special benefits for the body, mind, and soul. That's what I will be sharing with you guys in my first segment, which is called Matcha Hour. So think of it like quenching your self-care thirst, okay? That's what we're going to be doing with Matcha Hour. So I'll show you guys the recipe uh, to my matcha. Matcha is a green tea leaf that is grounded up into powder from China. Matcha tea offers a myriad of health benefits, including a potent dose of antioxidants, enhanced metabolism, improved focus, and a calm energy boost due to its unique combination of amino acids and caffeine. Matcha is not an everyday drink, but it can get your day started and your taste buds jump in. Okay guys. Here's my matcha. Doesn't it look good? Okay, so we're going to take the first sip. But first, before we decide to drink our matcha, what we also do here, just because this is self-care, we're going to pick a card from our affirmation cards and we're going to read one of our affirmations. So let's see what card we have today on today's first episode of Kiwi Talks. So the first card that we pulled up today is the... I trust in my ability to create the life I desire. That's a good one, isn't it? Oh my goodness. While we drink our matcha, I'll talk to you about what that affirmation means to me. Okay, so that's how I'm going to start off my day with this affirmation. To me, this means that I believe and I am confident in my decision making which means okay I believe in all of the decisions that I make and I'm confident in every single decision that I make okay also that I have the brain power to improve in my life so I have the ability is one and I'm confident that I do and I believe that I will and I have the brain capacity to thrive each day. You know what I mean? Like, I believe that, you know, I can make a podcast and start something new, like a new venture in my life. And as I keep, you know, telling myself that every day that I know that I can do it, then that means it's possible. If you tell yourself over and over again that, I can do this, I can do this, I will do this, this is going to happen, I see this in the future, then most likely it will happen. 
because it's it's like manifesting and that's what I really like about affirmation cards they're like manifestations so every day I get my matcha or my drink of choice and I pick from the affirmation cards and every day I'll say those things to myself until I start to believe it and then I'll go through the day actually achieving it you know what I mean like working towards steps to getting these things done so I really like that for me <laughs> So me having the ability to um, create the life that I desire, I, I I would like to create it. Like I create it on paper or I create it, I see it in my mind and then I say, okay, how do I get to this point where I see myself? And every day that's what I do. I just work towards, you know, and if I have that card on my mirror, if I have that card by my bed and my nightstand, if I have that card in um, the closet, you know, as soon as I go in my drawer and I see that card, then I know like, okay, I have a mission and this is my mission to create the life that I desire in the future or just like in the next three months, in the next five months, six months, two years, five years, 10 years, however that may be, you know, in your own brain and in your own mind, however you see yourself, you know, doing the things that you desire or having the things that you desire. That's like, this is so freaking good. Oh my God, guys, you guys got to try this. Let me tell you the benefits of a matcha though. The matchas really get you energized like ready for your day they clean you out i'm not gonna lie this green tea definitely cleans you out you know it's not something like those heavy teas those weight loss teas that make you use the bathroom a lot no 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 no. it's just a regular cleanse like make sure you use the bathroom properly whenever you have to each and every day i love this drink oh my god it is so delicious i first tried this drink at um starbucks and then I found out that they have it at Dunkin' Donuts, which is much more sweeter than Starbucks. But Starbucks does everything, and they do everything to the way you like. So, that's cute. I love this drink. And on my other segments and my other episodes, I will have other drinks. Trust me. I will have other drinks. There's a lot of drinks that um can get your day started to where you feel energized, and you feel happy, and you just reflect on yourself like with the affirmation cards my affirmation cards i've worked on them for a really long time and i'm really gonna take that into consideration like what each affirmation says like every day i'm gonna work towards believing what i see in those affirmation cards like no ifs ands or buts about it so um my you get your macho you get your drink of choice and you get your affirmation card you pluck from your affirmation cards and you read that and you believe that that's just how it goes okay so that is really what matcha hour is all about you know just reflecting on yourself and saying to yourself okay i'm gonna take this time out of the day to care about me and the things that I need because sometimes we all become so busy with doing things like work, friendships, um, household bills, or just school, work, whatever that may be. We always get caught up in things and then we have to take a minute to ourselves to say, okay, what do I need? Like, I'm, I, you know, I got a boyfriend over here and he's asking me to do this, do that, do this. Or whatever he needs my time he needs my 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 conversation he needs this and that from me but what do i need and that's when you take your matcha hour <laughs> that's what i call it my matcha hour where i just think for myself and i plan or i affirm or i manifest whatever that may be while sipping on a good drink it doesn't hurt okay trust me Yep, I'm going to finish this matcha up and we're going to move on to the next segment. Hey guys. 
guys so this is amazon favorites and i do this every week where i'm an amazon affiliate and down in the description bar i will have the links to all of these amazon favorite products that i'm going to be showing you today so make sure if you like any of these products that i show you today that you go down directly to the description bar and you click on the link for the product and every time you make a purchase I get a small commission it would help support this channel so uh, here goes our first Amazon favorite and our first product is the purple echo pop Alexa this is a voice activated speaker that plays Apple music Sirius XM Spotify and you can shop and do research and you can set reminders on this Alexa pop it is super cute and convenient and small the next product that we have is the iWalk Purple Portable iPhone Charger. This is compatible with iPhones, iPhone 14s to iPhone 6s. Super cute, is super convenient and reliable. It has an LED screen which displays its battery life. See, this one right here is for all my Apple heads. This is a three-in-one Annie Lincoln charger that is the ultimate lifesaver. You can charge all of your Apple devices at once. Yes, I said at once. You can charge your iPhone, you can charge your AirPods, and your Apple Watch at the same damn time. Yes, this is a double must-have, okay? This is my favorite Amazon app item that I've purchased in the past. So, this product is an LED light box that's great as a nightlight. It has eight different colors and it displays four different settings. This comes from strobe lights to dimmers to just a great, beautiful nightlight in your room and any room in your house. I think you guys will love every single Amazon favorite that I've shared today. So make sure you click the links in the description box if you would like to buy any of these products. I guarantee you they are Kiwi approved, period. Hey guys, so the second segment is called Tea Talk Time. And Tea Talk Time is just where I give you a little bit of the juicy gossip. I give you my perspective, the internet's perspective, and then I give my opinion. Okay, so... We're going to be talking about P. Diddy, of course, because he is, his name has been running through the internet like for a month straight or maybe a month and a half straight. <laughs> okay, we also have our second topic, which is Christian Keys. I don't know if anyone has heard about him, but he is um, starting up some um, allegations about some saying in Hollywood, and um, that is very juicy, honey. Okay, so then we're gonna also get to failing marriages. Lately, there's been a lot of failing marriages, and I feel like it's time to speak on some of it because me being um, so I'm a mom, and I really feel like um, marriage is a very important thing, and. I think it's time to talk about it, you know, just give my perspective. And also, um, there's been some hot spicy tea about trans women in sororities, and I would really like to um, spread my perspective, my opinion, and also what people have been talking about, what the news has been talking about. It's a lot of st stuff going on, okay? So, also, women in entertainment. I think that is a very, very touchy subject, but I want to talk about it, and I feel like I have every right to talk about it because I am a woman, and um, entertainment is something that I enjoy, so I think we should talk about that too. Kiwi wants to talk about that, so those are a few topics that we're going to be talking about, so let's get into it. So let's talk about this very hot commodity topic, okay, which is called P. Diddy, who goes by a bunch of names. P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Diddy Combs, uh, Brother Love, like all of these names he has. Okay, cool. That's okay. I'm going to touch on the sexual allegations, but I'm more interested in the gatekeeping stuff. Like, what's that about, you know? 
I think the essay stuff can wait. You know, everybody else is talking about it. So it's not like, you know, I have to do too much talking on it. Because it's kind of really all out there for everyone to see. And I don't want to speculate. Because I really don't know what the hell is going on. All I know is that there's some, like, allegations and court cases and civil trials. And I, uh, look, okay. To me, with all the videos and interviewing going around, the gatekeeping stuff is really what is keeping me captivated in this story. Because I could really care less about all of that stuff. But the gatekeeping things, like him, like the allegations of him like holding people's publishing for years and... Um, just using his artist for you know for him to be famous and they get stuck at the bottom is something that I really am intrigued about because it's like really dude <laughs> like you're gonna be stingy like that that's where you get all your riches from not just producing albums and things like that is really because you're holding people's like publishing and masters or whatever the case may be i'm not really sure exactly what it is but that was more like shocking to me i'm not gonna say shocking because of course everybody heard about what you know was going on with diddy and all of the bad boy um tv shows he had with like making the band and danity kane but that right there is like come on now why, why would you do that you know brother love you know what i'm saying like Come on. I remember when I was about, like, 14 years old, my mom, she was taking me to Miami. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting ready for my trip. And um, I'm getting ready for my trip to go to Miami to hop on a flight. And before I decided to go fly on a flight, I took some birthday money that I had got in a car from one of my relatives. And I said, oh, I just got um, um go to there was a music store i think it was called fuse or something like that i don't really remember back in the 2000 early 2000s or whatever but there was a um there was a um i think that was like 2007 or 2006 so okay so i'm like before i get on this plane i want to get me um a cd player so i um, this store sold like Sony items or whatever so I brought me this cool like light blue Sony CD player and then um, I brought a few albums so the one of the albums I brought was the Rihanna album her first very album with like um, Ponder Replay and all of those songs on there I brought the um, Jamie Foxx album which had like blame it on the alcohol and all of those good songs. I brought my first Chingy album uh, with the right there. That album, that album was so fire back in the days. Um, it had a lot of curse words and stuff. Like I should have never had that as a fourteen year old girl, but it was a good album from Chingy. And I also brought Danity Kane. And Danny D. Kane album was so good. It was something that I wasn't used to hearing as a teenage girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, about love and heartbreak and about women empowerment and all of this stuff I'm hearing from these females. And I'm kind of going through that. Not that I'm going through it, but, like, I'm at that age where it's, like, puberty. You start to like boys and stuff in high school. So, I mean, that was a fabulous fabulous album and i started to really gravitate towards those girls in danity kane and um their music was such a good new sound and i loved it and then i remember like not even a year later the group broke up and i'm like what the hell like why are they breaking up like i don't get it like why can't girl groups stay together where can groups stay together so i'm thinking as a teenager like oh somebody probably couldn't get along the girls probably had problems like what the heck i mean did he have it seemed like he had worked so hard to create this group for them to not keep it going and i remember seeing like problems between you know diddy and the girls and how he was talking to them and everything like that but i never really thought that it was the gatekeeping stuff you know what i'm saying like not to say that's what it is but allegedly it might be you know what i'm saying like some gatekeeping stuff like you know because um 
from what the blogs are saying and what the interviewers are saying and interviewing sessions and things like that are saying like it just seems like a lot of gatekeeping like not allowing people to excel to their highest potential unless they do some type of favors or you know some extraness I don't really know how that goes in the industry because I'm not in the industry but to know that these things do exist and people are not lying or could possibly exist and people may not be lying is crazy because music is something very special you know what I mean like music can get you out of a funk or music can get you motivated or music can keep you where you want to be in an emotion (laughs) if you want to be you know heartless or whatever it could get you in so many different moods and for someone to be controlling it is like a headache so that is what particularly um and it has me invested in these topics because I'm into music and the music industry and to know that someone could potentially have like your whole life and career and future in their palms and their sweaty little palms and just tell you you ain't gonna be shit you know it's not a good feeling and it's not a good you know it's not a good sports model you know what i'm saying it's not a good it's just not good you know for entertainment so I would love to hear more information about the gatekeeping stuff. Like, what other, um, you know, celebrities has possibly been, um, their careers have been put on hold because of Diddy. Like, um, I remember Day 26, they kind of disappeared. 112 was, you know, fire. I don't know where they went. They really don't even do any performances. I don't even see 112 do performances anymore. They don't do anything, not even tours. Like, and I'm trying to think, like, is that a, it could it be a possibility that the reason why they don't do tours, why they don't do shows or award shows, nothing is because someone's holding their 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 publishing or their masters and they're like you know what instead i'm not performing i'm not gonna be a slave to you you know what i'm saying like what is the tea you know what i'm saying like i really need to find out i need to do some investigating or something because i'm just not understanding and it needs to make sense and it needs to click for me because i'm like where are these people at like nobody from bad boy comes out like They're just all vanished. Like, every single artist he's had has vanished. Like, I just don't get that. So, I think that that is more important to me than the essay stuff. Because you'll never know if the essay stuff is true until it goes through litigation and trials and there's discovery or people settle. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't really get too um, caught up in that type of stuff. But um, that is very um, interesting to me. You know what I mean? Oh, and you know what else has been interesting to me? Another thing that's been interesting to me is that there's some type of allegations going on that Diddy might have put some money on Tupac's head. Is that, like, that is crazy. Like, that sh- that's, that's insane. Like, what if it's true and, like, everybody for over the years always thought, like, there was something much bigger to the Tupac death. Like, it was a hit not just the fight and then everything you know transpired in the car and then a drive-by like everybody thought it was something so much bigger and comes to find out that allegedly it could be true that it was something bigger like diddy actually orchestrating it that's crazy that is that's been on my mind too like i feel like that's something we should get into like for real you know what i'm saying so more information is coming out that p diddy allegedly put money on the infamous tupac's head like can y'all believe that and side note like tupac really had alopecia can y'all believe that like jada wasn't lying like okay but that's just a side note but allegedly that's what's been going on and circulating like that you know, P. Diddy 
has put some money on um Tupac's head and we all thought like well I'm not gonna say we but back then in the 90s people I guess speculated or maybe in the 2000s I'm not sure but when I was younger we used to all hear that oh maybe Diddy had something to do with it or so next we have Christian Keys I don't know if anyone knows who Christian Keys is he's a syndicated actor he's acted for over 20 almost 20 years and Christian Keys has appeared in several TV films and plays such as The Preacher's Son, Saints and Sinners, Medea Goes to Jail, All of the Queen's Men. I don't know if you guys seen any of those, but I have, and he's a pretty good actor. Like, um, he's been doing this for a long time, but basically there's some tea in the internet world that just came out where Christian Keys came out on live to his followers that he's been allegedly sexually harassed in the industry for over 20 years by a rich billionaire. And a few others in Hollywood, but the rich billionaire allegedly sexually assaulted him while he was intoxicated one night. And, like, not that he, you know, went far, but he did grab his package, as Christian said in his live to his followers. So, that to me is like, whoa, that is big, huge news for the internet, if, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And so basically, um, Christian came out and he just said that um, that there was a billionaire and he left the name Anonymous, who the billionaire is. And he just stated that this person has been sexually harassing him. The billionaire had told Christian um, if Christian would just get naked, he doesn't have to do anything, the billionaire just wants to watch, he'll give him over a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, hello? Like, not that I would have did that, but that's a lot of money, just, okay, but I understand Christian, he seems like a God-fearing man, and something like that is considered homosexual to him and he did explain express that in his um in his live to his followers and um he seemed very brave about it but then again he kind of seemed like like in my opinion like I wanted to know like if I could ask him a question if he was right in front of me like why would you wait f over 15 years to say something about it you know what I'm saying? Christian continues to tell his followers that these type of offers have been offered to him a numerous of time with this one billionaire. And he also stated that he uses, he's been tape recording this billionaire for since 2005, 2005. He's been taping this billionaire since 2005. And I'm like, what? Like since 2005 you've been taping him and he has no idea and you're finally coming out with it oh my goodness that is super big like imagine the shakes in his boots that he's feeling right now this billionaire christian says in his live that people who are um, supposed to be his mentors in hollywood actually wanted to him and I'm like okay I mean he's a handsome man but he is not homosexual or he is not into the same sex so I mean I get it he said that God has brought him this far to not um you know say yes to these offers that he's been offered by these Hollywood people and I get that I just don't know why he waited so long like 20 years but then again he also mentioned that this person is super huge in entertainment and that this person possibly employs a lot of people so in his head he's thinking let me not destroy careers of others especially my peers I don't know who this person is I can speculate and people have speculated who these people are but I'm not going to do that until the real information comes out. And honestly, like, it sounds like some real 
inside Hollywood, Holly weird type stuff. And um, I'm not sure how true it is. It's just something that he came out with on his live to his followers. Christian seemed to be getting extremely frustrated in the video. You could even see him tearing up a little bit. So it seems like this is true. I mean, then again, he's an actor. So... <laughs> like, you know, we can only take it from face value what he says, hear him out and, you know, support him in whatever endeavors he chooses to take this on. You know what I'm saying? And if it's true, it's true. If it's not, then, you know, whoever, you know, is lying um, will be um, should be apprehended or whatever should have to take the consequences that come with lying. So that's it. Also, Christian mentions that he knows that like other people in the industry that have probably been offered these same type of sexual advances and he feels for them because you know he was strong enough to say no but that doesn't mean that you know someone else wasn't strong enough you know because like he said in the video he only had about three thousand dollars in his pocket and that's another thing i'm sorry a lot of these celebrities, like, you be thinking, like, oh, my God, they got so much money, they're rich, they're living the good life, really be broke, like, really be living paycheck to paycheck, literally, and that's crazy to me, like, in this day and age, in 2023, going on 2024, entertainers, to be exact, like, should be getting paid by now, like, what is the wage thing about like what is why aren't your contracts being negotiated better i mean i guess people are taking things because they're desperate but for him to have three thousand dollars in his pocket come on bro like i'm not saying anything wrong with that the average person probably doesn't have three thousand dollars in a bank account you know what i'm saying but if you've been in several movies and things like that I, I just don't get it. It's Terrence Howard, he just came out saying that he didn't even get paid that much for um, Empire. Empire was a huge syndicated show on TV on one of the highest, like, really biggest um, networks. I think that was um, Fox. Come on, like... News reporters get paid more than what Terrence Howard was getting paid. And that's super shocking to me. Like, he deserves his coin. Like, come on. What are y'all doing? So, okay. That is what's going on with Christian. And hopefully, I mean, I... I kudos to him for coming out because, you know, a lot of men don't... You know, men do get touched and men do get sexually harassed, and men do go through those problems just like women. It's just that they don't really say or come out because they don't want to look like, you know, demasculated. And I get that. So kudos to him if this is true, that he comes out and he says exactly what's going on so that the next person who's coming into the Hollywood industry for acting or ent any type of entertainment, you know, they know what's going on and they decide not to work with people who you know um are doing those type of things too and that's an, that's they go say gatekeeping again you see what i'm saying like that is what's going on in the entertainment world right now a lot of gatekeeping is being exposed okay so that's christian's story and i'm just gonna stay on top of that story to see what happens next my next topic is failing marriages like i'm gonna be honest with you guys a lot of marriages have been failing on the internet and it kind of makes me feel a little numb at this point because i'm like it's kind of this topic is kind of like just expected from where i'm from <laughs> like you know people don't last in our generation like relationships like they used to back in the days where you can ask your aunties or your grandmas or your moms and you see their relationships lasting for 25 plus years like that was amazing you know what i'm saying it really is amazing to stay with one person for 25 years <laughs> plus so i mean that's a skill at this point that is like a um, diamond in a rough type of situation, needle in a haystack, you know, all of the above. So, 
that is really good but lately a lot of celebrity marriages have been failing and crumbling and i just have some opinion on it um one of the marriages that seem like it's failing i'm not exactly sure if it has failed yet but obviously everybody knows the cardi b and offset situation now that's just one situation i'm gonna speak on it but not only the cardi b and offset situation but the genie my and jeezy it seems like jeezy went and filed divorce from genie my and they just had a baby i mean the baby is only about one years old i don't even think the baby's two yet so that's one relationship and then you also have the tiana taylor and iman um I, i forget his last name but iman breakup you know what i'm saying that is like I don't even know what to say about that. But those are like three of the what, um, marriages that I can think of that have just crumbled so quickly. And it's been weighing on my heavy on my uh, mind or whatever. So let's talk about the Cardi B and Offset situation. Now, Cardi B and Offset got married and um, they had two beautiful children, a boy and a, 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 a little girl whose culture and the boy, I forget his name. Um, I don't know his name, but you know, that's cool. Okay. They have two kids together. That's just what matters. And I feel like just because they are young, I believe Cardi B is in her early thirties and Offset may be in his early thirties as well. And I feel like just because they're celebrities doesn't mean that they can't have a healthy, successful relationship. But a lot of people are saying that, you know, this was to be expected. You know what I'm saying? Because in the beginning of their relationship, uh, Cardi was dealing with a lot of infidelity. I believe she was dealing with a lot of infidelity from Offset. Upset. So, like, when he did tell her, you know, um, I'm sorry, babe, I'm going to change, she kind of accepted that and said, if you do do this again, I'm leaving you. And he decided to, you know, propose to her and lock it in. You know what I'm saying? And I get that. She, she wanted to, you know, get married to the, you know... I promise I'll change, dude. And I get it. Some people believe that. And that's okay to believe that that man is going to change. And if he puts a ring on it, you just know he's serious and he's going to change. But I'm not saying he even did anything. I'm not saying he didn't change. I really don't know exactly the details. But I know that Cardi B has been on the internet, on live, expressing to her followers that she is so hurt and that her and him separated, have been separated for quite some time now. And I just feel like I'm hurt for them because it's like, dang, y'all got two kids, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm confused because I'm like, even people with money, and, um, you know, who are wealthy, well off, have everything at their fingertips. Like, how come their relationship can't, you know, prosper? You know what I mean? Like, you would think that having things and having money would, you know, keep the relationship going. And a lot of times, I don't even see these celebrities doing anything together. I mean, yeah, they go to award shows together. You may see a few lives of them together or at the club, but you don't really see celebrities going on dates anymore. Like, back in the days, um, paparazzi used to catch, you know, um, celebrities, couples going on dates and stuff. Like, you would see them in a restaurant or you would see them at an amusement park and take pictures, but you don't really see that anymore. I guess they're too rich for you to see them, but... I mean, I feel for Cardi and I feel for Offset. Like, I just hope that even though their relationship seems like it's crumbling, at least maybe they can double back and spin the block with each other just one more time for the kids' sake. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Because the kids are so young, they really don't know what's going on. And when they get older, they're going to be able to see the Internet. And it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. Um, and you know, that's not good for the kids. So hopefully they, you know, get it together and Cardi B stays off the internet and everybody in her business because people don't really care. People prey on your downfall and then people also, you know, 
they 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 just like to throw rocks at you when you're down and that's she doesn't need that you know what i'm saying the next couple is genie Mai and jeezy so like i said it seems like jeezy decided to get a divorce and i just feel like okay when they got together when they first got together and she announced it on the real genie Mai announced that her and jeezy were together on the real i kind of like was like huh like i didn't really understand that relationship not to say that biracial relationships are weird to me no what it was is that I just, it, it just seemed like they didn't mesh because I grew up listening to Jeezy and then I've watched Jeannie Mai on The Real. And nothing to me I saw was chemistry at all. I really didn't see any chemistry between them two. And then not only did I not see chemistry between them two, but they kind of did everything super fast. Like, one minute Jeannie Mai was announcing that she was in a relationship with Jeezy. The next minute, she was saying that they're possibly getting married. Then the next minute, she was pregnant. I'm like, what the heck? Like, this is very fast. So, it happened really fast, and... I understand that relationships, when you love someone, you love someone and you try to get, you know, you try to live right life the right way. But it was super fast to me and it seemed like there was no chemistry. So it was like, I knew this was going to happen. I knew this wasn't going to last. But then again, you know, you would hope it lasts because like I said it before, there's a baby involved and the baby is probably not even like two years old yet. And it's like, come on, like y'all couldn't try to make it last for a little while. And you know what's crazy? Women, we go through things with men and we always give second and third and fourth, fifth, sixteen chances. You know what I'm saying? But with Jeezy, it seems like he didn't even give her one chance. I mean, he granted allegedly I believe he said that they had did some um some counseling and okay, I get that. So that's a chance, but it's just like, I don't know. It seems like they're getting divorced and he's wrapping it up as quick as he started it. So that's Jeannie Mai and Jeezy. Now I have Tiana Taylor and Iman. How I feel about T Taylor, T uh, Tiana Taylor and Iman. I think Iman was a basketball player. I don't even know what. Next time I'll do more research. But I believe that Iman is a... Um, basketball player and being a basketball player you would think like oh they fast they always out there they're gonna he's gonna be a cheater you know what i'm saying he can't keep one girl but iman i never really heard anything come out about him like in that way he seemed like a really stand-up guy when he was with tiana even though their chemistry was off a little bit too to me in my eyes but he seemed like a really good guy, like a real fatherly family man at first. And then you have Tiana Taylor where she just knows what she wants and she goes and gets it. Like she is a self-care queen, I'm telling you. She knows exactly what she wants. And Tiana and um, Iman seem like they were a really good couple, you know, just tucked away. Um, and that's another thing. That tuck away relationship is crazy. But... I don't know, Tiana Taylor and Iman, I just feel like I don't know what their inside home issues are. But I also look at them like, damn, they could have lasted. You know what I mean? Like, they really could have worked it out. Because back in the days, you know, even though relationships weren't in the best area and in, in, in a couple's life like they were going through some hardships in their relationship they would still stay together stay stay together for the kids and i believe tiana and iman have two daughters so it would be in the best interest of the children to still stay together like back in the days uh the old generation would stay together even though they were unhappy i think some of them would just live in the same household and have separate rooms i don't know if they do that anymore i don't even know if tiana and iman are doing that but it would seem like they would do that for the little girls because uh, tiana taylor has some beautiful talent uh a talented beautiful children and um they're gonna really be somebody when they get older so you would hope that but i seen tiana 
up in the club with the, the, you know, the feminine, you know, like, woman, lady, women, lovers, you know, those girls. And I'm like, dang, girl, like, is your heart broken? Like, or maybe this is who she been the whole time. I don't know. But um, I seen her in the club twerking her ass on, um, I think that's the girl that sings, I put that on my own mama. Hood. That girl, she was twerking on her. And then we seen Janae, um, is her name Janae Monell? And we know that she um, dates the same sex. So, I just seen her in the club with those type of girls. And I don't know if that's where her next situation ship is going to be in that field. But I did see her in the club. Okay, it's working on, okay, some flowers. But, okay, next we're going to talk about a relationship that is very near and dear to my heart. And that is Remy Ma and Pat Poos. Oh, my God. That marriage. Now, I feel like Remy and Pat Poos, I'm not mad. Like, I'm really not mad about that situation because they've been together for so freaking long. It's, like, bound for somebody to accidentally do something that, or it's, it's bound for them to have a little breakup or a little situation. And for everybody on the internet bashing Remy, I, you guys are petty. Y'all are super petty because, you know what, everybody's crying for all of these men that, you know, you know, with their infidelity and oh don't be too hard on him and everything but the way people been eating up remy i do not appreciate it okay i'm just let y'all know that like y'all don't even know the true story yet maybe or maybe not yes she did you know look crazy on the stage with Gichi Gotti was coming for her but you know what Papoose and Remy have been together for so freaking long. It's bound for something to happen in their relationship. But they have a sweet, beautiful, golden child. Do you understand what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, she is what's most important in this relationship, everyone. Okay, internet world? She is so precious and so cute. And they had wanted, well, Papoose had wanted this child for a very long time with Remy. And he finally got it. Okay, so if Papoose decides that he wants to, you know, stay with Remy Ma, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, because like I said, back in the old generation, that's what relationships were. You know what I'm saying? That's how relationships last for 25 plus years. And that's what relationships is about. You know, speeding over those bumps, replacing your tires, and keep on trucking. That's what it's about. So, please, don't, don't, don't do that. They have a beautiful daughter, and they have other kids that are older, and the best thing for them to do is to stay together. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. It's nothing that he can't forgive her for, obviously. I would love to see them back together and back where they were before. I don't know exactly how they are. Honestly, we all just speculating because we really don't know what came, what happened. But, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, just leave that alone. One relationship that I aspire to one day be like is... Um, Ciara and Russell Wilson like they just understand life they know how to do life right you understand what I'm saying like she's on her fourth kid I believe um I believe she has two with Russell one who was before Russell which is still Russell's kid you feel me and then you have um this new baby I'm not sure. It might be five of them. I don't know. Four or five. Whatever. But they have four or five kids. Russell is super successful. Ciara is super successful. And then you have these beautiful children that they're raising up. It's so amazing. They're going to be like the Jackson 5, I swear, because... They are just doing life right, those two. Like, I aspire to be something like them. I don't really know what goes on in their household, but the way they portray their relationship is amazing. Like, Russell and Ciara are on a mission to build family and generational wealth. Like, 
family generational wealth period you can tell they on a mission this is how relationships are supposed to be you get your person you have a few kids with them or um, as a lot of kids with them and then you build generational wealth between your family recently i just saw on the internet that russell i don't know how true this is but um russell wilson brought I believe Ciara's masters for her so that she can continue to be creative and create new music or create artists and just get a record label going or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm like, I see you guys' plans. I see your vision. I see what you're doing. And this is how the black family is supposed to operate. Like, they need to write a book. They need to write a book because I will purchase your book, Mrs. and Mr. Wilson. I promise you. Like, they're doing life so freaking right. And, you know, um, we don't really know what they go what goes on behind closed doors. But what they're showing us is a real good example of relationship. That's going to last 20 years to 25 years to 50 years down the line you don't need to do all that extra stuff like that is how life is because you just live and die you live you procreate and you die so you might as well do it with the person that you trust you might as well do it with you know your family and i i say kudos to them they're doing a great excellent job next topic we have the topic of trans trans and sororities. So, the University of Wyoming has had some controversy hitting their co college recently. Okay, so this topic, I'm super torn. And I want to have a definitive stance on it, but I don't have a definitive stance on it. So, there's a sorority in... Um, the UW, which is the University of Wyoming, called Kappa Kappa Gamma. Now, I've never been in a sorority, but I would have loved to have been in a sorority, I guess. Just because, you know, like, I like colors. <laughs> and I like to be a part of something. And I like sisterhood. So, I would have loved to be a part of a sorority, um, but I went to a community college, so... <laughs> Community college didn't have that. There's a trans woman in this school who wanted to be a part of um, a sorority house. And the sorority house was Kappa Kappa Gamma. The trans woman, Artemis um, Langford, did get into the sorority. Uh huh. But there's several sisters in the sorority house who feel like that Artemis is a male because technically they feel like Artemis is a biological male and that he should not be able to pledge with the sisters because it makes them feel uncomfortable. The girls, I think it's about six to seven of them, filed a lawsuit stating that um, Artemis shouldn't be allowed into the sister, um, into the sorority, and the reason for um, that is they i guess there was some allegations that while the girls were um showering or you know while the girls walk around the house with just towels on they feel uncomfortable because artemis has been you know looking at them for long periods of times and allegedly artemis had some type of erection <laughs> while looking at the girls and it was visible it was, excuse me, it was visible for all the girls to see. So the girls feel extremely uncomfortable and have taken this issue to court. Artemis feels discriminated against and um, that these allegations from these girls are not true. Artemis does have some support from some of the sisters. So, you know, Artemis isn't going anywhere. How I feel about it, right, with a trans woman being in sorority. This is my opinion and my opinion only, okay? I feel like, like I said, I'm torn. Um, I see it from Artemis's 
standpoint and I see it from the women um, over here, the sisters that are in, in litigation, okay? I see it from both standpoints because Artemis is a trans woman and I don't believe there's many trans women in this um, college who want to be a part of a sorority. So being that Artemis is a trans woman and kind of probably feeling alone, like you only in your mind identify as a woman then you know you want to be where you feel like the most comfortable or where you fit in and being around other women would possibly you know help you to feel comfortable while you're in college away from family and friends and people who accept you so I kind of understand Artemis perspective of wanting to be in a sorority and have and feeling like you know that they deserve that opportunity to be a part of a sorority. But then again, on the other side, me being a woman, um, I would like to feel comfortable in spaces as well. Artemis has the right to feel comfortable in spaces, then so should the women. And, um, yeah, and so should the women feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, now, there was only a selective few, I believe. I don't know exactly how many women are in the sorority, but, and I don't know who's majority, the ones who accept Artemis or the ones who don't accept Artemis. I don't know who's majority, but majority should rule in a sorority, I guess. Um, and then again, you know, there's exceptions. So, I honestly feel like, um... The women have a point and Artemis has a point. And if there is some type of allegations, if those allegations are true about Artemis erecting in front of women and, you know, possibly, I heard they said something about ejaculation. Like, they could see it was visible. Like, once one of the girls and the staring at the girls, you know, I I can understand how Artemis may have stared someone down. Allegedly, he might have stared the girls down because girls do that as well. Like when you're fascinatingly beautiful or captiv captivating, like you have this natural beauty about yourself. Sometimes people stop and they stare and they get mesmerized in your beauty. But then again, I also understand on the women's defense that, um, you know, that could be a loophole for, you know, people who, you know, want to be around women and just stare at women. And it can become a little bit of creepy. So I, I, I get both sides. It's so hard to pick a side unless there are these allegations of, you know, the stuff are true. Because like I said, women who are biologically women have rights as well and then you have artemis with rights so one has to trump the other that is the point of the scale of justice you know what i'm saying I'm, i can't lean either way i am very torn and um i believe that you know everything should go through litigation or whatever so on to my next topic and that's how i'm gonna just wrap that one up Okay, so now I want to move on to my final topic, which is about women and entertainment. This topic is so near and dear to my heart. Um, lately, I've just been noticing some things while I'm watching TV and the new shows that are out. And um, not to say that this topic and the things that I'm going to be talking about has never been covered before, but it's just my perspective again. And also the internet's perspective, I guess you can say that. But um, I have an opinion and I would like to talk about it. And I just want to talk about four different shows that I've been watching lately. And I'm kind of a girl that can watch many different genres on TV. But um, these are like the main um, talked about shows that women like to watch. So... The first uh, show I would say is obviously Real uh, Housewives. That's a show that people like to watch, um, women uh, like to watch. Then you have um, Love and Hip Hop from time to time, you know, even though they have the different series and different towns, 
you know, that's cool to watch from time to time. And then you have the um, Basketball Wives. That's something that comes out every few couple of years apart. But um, Basketball Wives is one. And then Zeus Network. Okay, that's another network um, that, you know, comes out with uh, women in, in, in on TV. So basically, um, I want to talk about these three shows or four shows. Um, basically, everybody knows these shows. These shows are just about women and their day-to-day things that they do and about their lives and who who they date or, or whatever the case may be. About women just being amongst each other and the day-to-day things that they do. Okay? Some of these shows express uh, sisterhood. You know, they just show each other in different lights around each other and then uh, some of these shows um are just all about fighting and what i've noticed in tv lately is okay so real housewives let's just give a brief description those are a bunch of women who get together and they just talk shit to each other you know like they read each other you know that's what they call it oh girl i'm reading you right now you know that little petty little thing And then you have the basketball wives where the most that might happen that's, like, chaotic would probably be, like, one of the girls get a drink thrown in their face. You know, that's kind of normal on a basketball wives. And then you have the love and hip-hops. Love and hip-hops, they fight, but it's kind of like we're not going to show the fight. Like, yeah, we know there's violence going on, but we can't see the violence. Like, the violence isn't televised. You know what I mean? And then you got Zeus, where it's just straight WWE SmackDown. Like, girls is body slamming each other, putting each other in the full Nelson. Like, it's crazy, right? So I've just been noticing, like, lately, TV shows that have to do with women, like brown or black women, have been getting a little out of control like the narrow like the narrative is fighting like oh my god we hate each other like i hope that young girls who watch this that are growing up don't decide to despise other girls that look just like them or emulate this behavior it's just like it's getting a little cringy for me and um Because people are just creating networks just to see girls rip each other's heads off. Like, when I watch these shows, I'm like, all it is is a bunch of attacking each other. It's not really, like, too much sisterhood. Like, and I really don't like that for us. Like, I don't. And I'm finding myself to not be interested in these type of TV shows. It's crazy because I've been watching them for years and then I see how girls in real life interact with each other. Now, mind you, the girls I know, like, we don't interact that way at all. But there are younger generational girls that are watching this stuff and they're seeing the Christian Rocks, they're seeing the Roly Polies, they're seeing the Basketball Wives, they're seeing all of that stuff and I wonder... Are they going to turn out like this? <laughs> like not being able to get along. Because it seems like not even black women respect black women. You know? And it's a little frustrating for me when we already have fights going on um, on the internet. Where there's a gender war right now. So we have to fight gender wars. And then we have to fight wars with our own peers on these network and shows and reunions and then also we have to fight society you know what i mean like i think taraji p henson is going on um a press tour for the color purple and she's just expressing how she's been in the game her taraji and um viola davis which are two of my favorite actresses they're going on like press tours or whatever I think Viola Davis was just in the Hunger Games, so she's also going on a press tour, and they're just explaining, like, how the industry is just not paying them what they're worth. Like, they should be in, how can I say it? They should be recognized as, like, global 
phenomenons, obviously, and be and they should be getting paid just like that. You know what I mean? So it's like black women or brown women, we're not getting the respect that we deserve in entertainment, period. And I'm just noticing it and I hope that it changes in some way, but I think that some of the ways that we're portrayed on TV is just not good. It's getting worse, and girls are growing up to see this, and um, I don't think it's healthy for uh, the female community. we already fighting with um, people not understanding what a woman is. We're already having issues with, you know, uh, trans women coming into sports and beating us. So, we already have all of these things getting thrown at us. Um, men shooting women. All type of stuff. In the foot. <laughs> so, I think that, you know, women, we deserve a little bit more respect. And we need to act a little bit more classier. Because I, I don't have a problem with watching, you know, Zeus Network. And um, I think there's another one. There's a new network that came out, which is just a bunch of girls fighting. Because I, I just can't get that concept. Like, how a bunch of girls go get their hair done, get their nails done, eyelashes done. And then they come to beat each other up. Like, I don't get it. Like, everything is done. And then you come and get done. Like, it doesn't make sense. These girls be fighting in heels and at the club and, like, what? It's, I don't know what, I think it's all of the something TV. I forgot what it's called. But it's this new show. And it's like a house full of people just fighting. Like, you got fights over here. You got fights over there. You got fights upstairs. You got fights downstairs. You got fights by the pool. You got fights by the bathroom, by the kitchen, by the hallway. It's like everybody's just fighting. And I'm just looking at all these girls, and there's some trans women, and I'm just like, everybody's fighting. Like, what's what, do y'all have that much animosity, like, in y'all hearts? Like, what's who's going on? It has escalated over the years. Like I said, from Real Housewives, they were just, you know, ooh, I read you, girl. You ain't shit. I slept with your baby daddy or I slept with your husband or your husband don't want you no more. He be down the block with Karen or whatever. Like, it went from that to, like, punching you in your face, like, <laughs> just over a sentence. So, like, I just feel like women in entertainment are looking a little bit crazy when we have... The Viola Davises and the Taraji P. Hensons complaining about them not getting the recognition or the pay they deserve. And I feel like, yeah, it's like crazy that women are getting paid to beat each other up. That's nuts to me. Um, it's kind of like, you know what, I, I guess it's all of these TV shows are like stemming from the jerry springer culture like obviously that's what it is that's obviously what it is it's basically these shows are coming straight from the jerry springer culture like you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna beat you up i guess they find monetary gains in the jerry springer culture that's what it is because that's that's basically what all of these tv shows about fighting is about it's just like a long episode of jerry springer that's all it is with no host the camera guy is the host you know what i'm saying the pulling the hair the dragging you the breaking it up the security guards breaking it up that's just jerry Co uh jerry springer on steroids so i guess these guys that call themselves moguls are finding um time and doing that with their money instead of producing and um helping the taraji p hensons of the future and the viola davises of the future yeah they rather see each other scratch each other's face-offs okay Honestly, I'm starting to think, like, 
one of those shows that uh, portray all of this fighting and bickering and stuff is actually going to get banned. Because someone's going to get hurt. Seriously hurt. I I see the security guards try to help the girls get off of each other. But I really think that someone is going to get hurt soon. And these people are going to be banned. And people are going to look at us women, brown skinned women, like clowns again um a lot of monkey names are gonna be thrown around again and it's just gonna be bad for us and i hate that for us so that is something that i feel very strong about because i love talent but that's not talent beating each other up <laughs> like it is if you want to be an mma fighter or a boxer or ufc player or a wwe female wrestler that's fine, but that's not talent. Okay, guys, so I would like to thank you all for sticking it through with me till the end. For those of you who did, this is the end of the podcast, and I hope you guys come back for next episode. The next episode is going to be something very juicy. We're going to have a New Year's special, and I would really love for you guys to participate. I'm gonna have We're going to have so much fun on the next episode of Kiwi Talks. And um, I would like for you guys to subscribe to this channel right here below. Press the subscribe button as soon as possible. You should have pressed the subscribe button a long time ago. I don't even know why I'm asking y'all again. But I'm just doing it to make sure you press the subscribe button. So that you can be notified every time I make a new video. Okay. This is something that I am very passionate about. Um, I have these conversations with people and my loved ones every day. And I was like, let me just put it on camera so people can hear my perspective. I love to share love and self-care. That's what this podcast is really all about. This podcast is about self-love. Like, loving yourself first. You know what I'm saying? It's good to give people love. It's good to share positivity. But when do you bust that U-turn to yourself you feel what i'm saying so that's what this podcast is about it's about self-care it's about beauty it's about loving yourself it's about giving yourself some knowledge it's about giving others knowledge it's also about business it's about just self-awareness it's about expressing yourself this is about being yourself loving yourself like that's what my podcast is i want everybody to feel comfortable in their own skin like i'm comfortable in my own skin okay self-confidence has got me to where i am today just being confident you feel me be confident and every day i'm gonna read affirmations to you guys we're gonna have so much fun on this podcast i promise you this first season of my podcast is gonna be top here on youtube i'm gonna also you can also find me on patreon and you're gonna be able to find me on instagram and facebook so make sure you subscribe i have all the links down in the description bar for all my amazon favorites so make sure you go down there and you click on the link and you purchase whichever item or product that you really liked or that you want to buy for your special person whatever just go down in the description bar there's amazon links down there and also, all of the information that I spoke about today will also be in the description bar. This outfit that I have on, I have the link down below. It is a Fashion Nova outfit, okay? I'll have that link down below as well, okay, in the description bar. Don't forget to comment on everything that we spoke about. Let me know how you feel. Let me know your perspective. I would love to know all of my subbies, all of my girls y'all perspective about everything that i spoke about today because these are very good topics that are um heavy have been heavy on my heart and i felt like i had to express with others about how i felt about these things um they're not just topics that i pluck from the internet these are really things that i think about on a daily basis like okay what the hell is going on you feel me we're gonna have advice days when you can call in and i'll give you kiwi's advice okay because come on i got the best advice are you kidding me we're also gonna have game night so you might as well call in for that too trust me stay tuned for our new year's episode don't be late 
all of my social medias are in the description bar. You can find me on all platforms down in the description bar. Okay, and till next time, I'll see you guys later.